Hai Sobat Samuel, berikut ini kami tunjukkan cara berinvestasi menggunakan aplikasi Star Mobile. Caranya sangat praktis dan tentunya mudah. Mari kita simak bersama-sama. Pertama-tama, unduh atau download aplikasi Star pada smartphone Anda. Tentu saja bisa melalui Google Play Store untuk Android dan juga App Store untuk iPhone. Setelah terdownload, buka aplikasi Star dan kemudian klik register online. Untuk saat ini, registrasi online hanya untuk WNI yang sudah memiliki IKTP saja ya. Lalu Sobat Samuel dapat melengkapi data-data pribadi Anda sesuai dengan IKTP tersebut. Dalam proses pembukaan rekening online ini, Sobat Samuel dapat memilih untuk menggunakan rekening dana nasabah atau RDN di BCA atau BRI sesuai dengan rekening bank yang sudah Anda miliki. Untuk pemilik rekening bank lain, Anda dapat membuka rekening Star Samuel Sekuritas melalui website atau offline. Untuk kode referral, Sobat Samuel bisa mengisinya dengan nama teman atau kerabat yang menyarankan aplikasi Star kepada Anda. Kalau tidak ada yang menyarankan atau merefer, kode tersebut dapat dikosongkan saja. Setelah mengisi data nomor telepon dan juga email, kode OTP akan otomatis dikirimkan ke email Anda sehingga Anda perlu memasukkan kode OTP yang tertera pada email tersebut di aplikasi Star. Setelah melakukan verifikasi OTP tersebut, Sobat Samuel dapat melanjutkan mengisi data diri sesuai dengan IKTP. Oh iya, Sobat Samuel yang belum memiliki NPWP masih tetap dapat membuka rekening Star dengan cara mengisinya di kolom NPWP dengan angka 0, yaitu sebanyak 15 kali. Selesai melengkapi data pribadi, pilih upload dokumen di menu bar bawah, kemudian upload foto IKTP, foto Anda bersama IKTP, dan juga foto tanda tangan Anda di atas kertas putih polos ya. Setelah semua data diinput, tunggu proses verifikasi data dan pengaktifan akun serta RDN dengan waktu tunggu maksimal 1 kali 24 jam ya selama hari kerja. Jika waktu tunggu tersebut terlewat, Sobat Samuel dapat mengecek email secara berkala karena kemungkinan ada kekurangan data atau ada kesalahan upload dokumen. Tentunya, tim Star Samuel Sekuritas akan menghubungi Anda terkait kekurangan data atau ada kesalahan proses melalui email atau telepon. Jika data sudah diverifikasi dan lengkap, registrasi akan diproses yang ditandai dengan adanya email pre-activation, berisikan client code, dan juga password login. Dengan memasukkan keduanya di login akun, Anda sudah bisa melihat market info di aplikasi Star. Namun, untuk mulai melakukan trading, Sobat Samuel harus menunggu proses pembuatan RDN atau rekening dana nasabah. Setelah proses pembuatan RDN selesai, akan ada email masuk. Dan Anda harus transfer ke nomor rekening yang sudah tertera di email ya Sobat Semua sebagai syarat pengaktifan rekening tersebut. Anda bisa transfer dengan jumlah berapapun, karena kami tidak membatasi jumlah minimal untuk pengaktifan rekeningnya. Setelah deposit berhasil, tunggu email selanjutnya ya untuk mendapatkan PIN trading. Dan setelah mendapatkan PIN trading, maka Sobat Samuel bisa langsung mulai ikut trading di aplikasi Star. Bagaimana? Mudah dan cepat kan? Selamat mulai perjalanan investasi ya Sobat Samuel bersama Star. Jangan lupa ya untuk follow YouTube, Instagram, Clubhouse, dan Telegram kita untuk tidak ketinggalan berbagai update dari Samuel Sekuritas Indonesia. Salam cuan! Halo Sobat-Sobat Samuel, sekarang Sobat Samuel sudah bisa pesan IPO langsung dari aplikasi Star Mobile loh. Bagaimana sih caranya? Yuk simak video tutorial ini. Pertama-tama, masuk ke aplikasi Star Mobile. Lalu, pilih menu Ball dan Post di bawah dan isi PIN Trading. Klik tombol Burger di sisi kiri, lalu pilih menu IPO Dan kemudian, pilih sub menu IPO Pada halaman ini, kamu bisa melihat berbagai pilihan saham yang ada dalam proses IPO. Mulai dari Book Building, Public Offering, dan juga Listed. Pada segmen Public Offering, kamu bisa memilih saham IPO yang dapat dipesan. Pilih salah satu saham IPO yang ingin kamu pesan dan klik order pada saham IPO tersebut. Setelah detailnya terbuka, scroll ke bawah dan klik input IPO. Setelah halaman pernyataan minat pemesanan terbuka, 
klik checkbox pernyataan persetujuan, syarat dan ketentuan, lalu klik setuju dan lanjutkan. Masukkan lot yang ingin dipesan, dan pastikan dana RDN tersedia, lalu klik Submit. Bila pemesanan IPO berhasil, kamu akan masuk pada halaman terima kasih yang menandakan bahwa transaksimu sudah selesai. Untuk melihat status pesanan saham IPO pada aplikasi Star Mobile, klik menu Bal dan Post, klik tombol Burger, lalu pilih menu IPO, dan kemudian pilih submenu IPO status. Kamu dapat cek apakah pemesanan sahammu sudah masuk pada halaman tersebut. untuk memastikan keberhasilan transaksimu. Nikmati Iporia dengan Star Mobile. Salam cuan! Oke, okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar on, uh, on, on our quarterly results and business updates from, from MD, PT MD Pictures TBK or Film IJ. And joining us today is David and also Anand, whom you might you might you might be familiar with from MD Pictures. And also we we have a special guest right now today, Mr. Anugrah Pratama from EY Partner Indonesia, which will be going you guys throughout about the, the webinar about film and what's the business prospects. And also joining us today is Kevin Hendrawan from Saham Rakyat and Pa Fatih as our senior technical analyst. So without further ado, um, just to keep it short, I would like to give the floor to Dave and Anan for your presentation and, and for, for other business updates. Dave and Anan, the time is yours. Okay, very good. Thank you. And thank you for everybody joining. Um, I think I can say that everyone on this call is probably quite familiar with MD by this time. Um, we've been together for a while now since our IPO. I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the business updates um, over this last quarter and this year, um, and then turn it over to Anand to talk about financials. Um, and then we can go further into some of the market trends and, and how it impacts our business. So if you don't mind, I will pull up a presentation and go to some key slides. I want to spend just a second on this information here. Um, everyone's quite familiar with the movie theater business, which is you know, we make films, we put them out into the movie theaters. We've been extremely successful with that since we first began doing that um, many years ago. Um, and the new business that came into play largely during the pandemic shutdown, so through 2021, was the new growth in online. And the numbers that we have here are showing that online came from almost nothing in 2019 to now over 20 million subscribers, which means that there are people paying every single month to access video in some type of service. The top subscription services are like Disney, video.com, Netflix, WeTV, View. These are all companies that charge you every month to watch some kind of content. And what I think is most significant about that is that first of all, from 7 million to 20 million in just a year and a half is a really phenomenal growth rate. Number two is that, that this is still a very, very low number. There is a large growth potential here in Indonesia, but it is, 20 million subscribers is bigger than the entire pay TV market in Indonesia that's been here for a while. So consumers are absolutely voting with their rupiah to subscribe to content online as opposed to paying for pay TV. And then lastly, MD Pictures is benefiting from this growth. We are the largest supplier of content to all of the major online platforms. And we're also the largest supplier of films to the movie theaters. So it's been a really good year for us in 2022. I want to dwell on this chart for a second as well. A couple of things to show here. Um, this represents, if you look at the chart in the background here, that starts with Kaka Ann 
includes Ivana, Kukira, Kauruma. We released in the first half of this year um, four films that have gained in the top 15% of all box office of Indonesian films. We've been very successful. This is just the first half. We accounted for 58% of the Indonesian box office. And Indonesian box office accounts for now over 50% of the box office in Indonesia. So although we've been very successful in the theaters before, even more so in this year, we've been exceptionally successful. And it's not simply because of Kaka and Didesa Panari. Of course, it's a phenomenal success story. At over 9 million tickets in Indonesia, it's been, it's a phenomenon that's achieved the highest box office of any film in history. Uh, we beat Spider-Man, we beat Doctor Strange. Um, the consumers in Indonesia really came out to see this. And it happened also in Malaysia, in Vietnam, in Singapore, breaking records everywhere. So certainly that helped us. You will see phenomenal results that we achieved in Q2, largely because of Kaka N. But that's not our only film. Ivana, Kukira, Karuma, Garis Waktu, and others, Menderat Dawarat, um, and soon another film coming in December, will cement our place in the box office for this year. And if you look in the first half, one thing to point out, because people often ask us, you know, what about other production companies? How do you stack up against your competition? And I'll have to say that there's some great competition. There are studios out there that make great movies. As you can see, um, there have been some good success stories. But in the first half of the year, MD Pictures is the only company in Indonesia to release more than one film in the top 15. In fact, we have four films in the top 15. And that's been our habit over the number of years that we've been in business. We produce more films than other companies that hit in the top 15. And that's the reason that you're going to see these extremely healthy margins and growth rates in our theatrical business. But let's look as well at the OTT side of this business. And that's this darker chart in the middle of this slide. This is a snapshot I took just over a month ago of how films were performing on Disney Plus. So Disney Plus is the largest subscription service in Indonesia. And here's how we did. Out of the top 10, there are one, two, three, four films from MD. Zero films from another production house. The rest are coming from Disney or Marvel. So the top two most watched films on Disney Plus in Indonesia are Kaka N and Garis Waktu. And you'll notice something. Of course, I'd expect it for Kaka N. It did so well in the movie theaters, now people are watching it even more online. But Garis Waktu, a film that was only number 15 in Indonesian box office, is to number two on Disney Plus. Let's go down to film number five. I Need You, Baby. I Need You Baby is not in the top 15. It's way below that. It did okay in the box office, but it certainly didn't break any records. But here it is, the number five most watched film on Disney+. Plus. More than Lightyear, more than Thor, more than Frozen or Pinocchio. And then Kukira Kauruma at number eight. So what this is telling us is that our films can do quite well in the movie theater. But when they do, we also do quite well in OTT. And this has been something that we've been banking on through 2022 and continuing through 2020, uh, through Q3. Okay. Um, I'm gonna point out a couple of details about our numbers and then turn over to Anand and you can speak to this further. So 2023 uh, Q3, I mean, I'm sorry, 2022 Q3, uh, we did quite well. Um, it, it's you know over 100% better than last year's Q3, and um, the profit margin is exceptional. Um, so what can I say? Uh, it's another great quarter. It's easy for us to come back to you guys each quarter and say, yeah, we did another great performance. Um, this is because of a combination of theatrical 
and OTT sales. You will, as I've said before in past earnings calls, we will always go up and down in percentages as to what portion of our revenue comes from theatrical versus what portion comes from OTT. It's really a matter for us of maximizing the monetization of every single title. You will find us releasing fewer films directly to OTT over the coming months. Uh, because we now that the movie theaters are open, we can do so much better with a th film out in the theater. Uh, but then once it, it's performing in the theater, we turn around and license it off to OTT as well. Um, pricing and margins are healthy and growing. Uh, digital is healthy and growing, but now also is theatrical. And I'll say one more thing before turning over to Anand, because I feel I must, please, um, as an example of how we can continue to monetize successful IP, um, we have uh, we are about to release the extended version of Kaka and the Desipanari. It's coming out at the end of December. Um, Kaka and the Desipanari, 40 more minutes and more scary to bring people back into the movie theaters and continue to monetize that property. Um, it, it's that's where we can show extremely high margins as long as things are doing very, very healthy in the, in the movie theaters. And once something is healthy in the movie theaters, we're able to then go to OTT and release series, release uh, more films, license content to OTT. And it's just a, it's like a chicken and egg loop that just continues. Um, we've been doing this for 20 years. We're celebrating our 20th year anniversary in business um, this next month. Um, and uh, we look forward to announcing a great year. We've already blown through our 2022 forecasts, but we'll have a really healthy uh, end of year. Um, and now I'll turn over to Anand. You can speak more as you wish uh, over these numbers. If you'd like, Anand, tell me which slide to go on to or use your own. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I think we will stick to the same slide. Slamat uh, Siang Samoya. So as Dave mentioned, I think we have a very good year. Uh, if you go with the number, uh, uh, YTD third quarter 2022, we have booked a revenue of around 383 million with a gross margin of above 70% and a net profit of around 154 million, which itself is a net profit margin of around 40%, which itself shows a very strong, you know, business model we are in. So this is, this is what we have achieved in, uh, in the first three quarter of 2022. We are looking a similar trend in the last quarter as well. And a composition of a revenue, if you see the previous year, because the cinema was closed, we were having, we were accommodating a revenue mostly from a digital platforms and the cinema bioscope revenue was a small portion of the overall revenue. But this year you can see a flip off that the cinema revenue is basically taking a majority portion of the overall revenue composition and digital is basically taking like 14%. But does not means, but that does not means that the digital revenue is dropping. What has happened is what has happened in 2022 is we are monetizing more against each content. That is what we are doing. If you see the number of content that we have delivered out to the public in 2022 is much lower compared to 2021. And still our overall revenue size and the margin size has grown in 2022. That is what we basically focus on. That is monetization, the maximum against each content. So you will see a lot of digital revenue will be coming in the fourth quarter uh, of the years because we are not planning too much release on the uh, cinema in the last quarter, except one movie, which is Kaka and Extension, which is going to come out in December which is again, will be a very another, you know, another label of margin because there will be, you know, you can expect that the uh, cost base is already been taken. There will be only a small cost, which will come out, but the margin will be drastic there. So you can, you can easily ima imagine how we are going to close the 2022. It will be definitely uh, upside. The numbers, uh, I think it will be 
in the range of in the range of 450 to 500 that is what we are looking at you know, depending depending upon how we will incast the other other revenue model from the existing contents and margin i think margin wise if you see we uh, i don't think other businesses in this scenario is uh, you know capturing that percentage of a gross and a net margin uh, Dave, can we go to a next slide? So this is more on the you know the PNL performance. On on if we go to the balance sheet, I will not go to the detail of the balance sheet because if you see, we are not a company where we, which are fully loaded with debts or something. We don't have any third party debts because of a different and a unique business model we have. Right, we normally pay in advance most of our contents before it when it is released or if it if it is aired in the you know uh, various platforms or in a uh, you know cinema big screen. So you will see our liability side is very low, uh, you know, because it is most of them is basically we pay in advance. But the most important thing which I will like to highlight is, of course, this MD picture is a free debt free company zero bank debts and the second thing is what we see in third quarter of 2022 is we are having a fully high loaded of cash we are close we have closed the third quarter with more than 434 billion of a cash free cash available in a balance sheet that shows that the business model is generating quarter after quarter free cash flow from operation and a free net cash flow from the overall business uh, uh, model of uh, growing the business. So that is uh, that is the those are the key points that will, I will just like to highlight from the balance sheet side. Uh, I think Dave, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. This one, or do you, okay? Yeah. yeah, I think from the financial side, that is all it is. Uh, now we will like to just highlight few points. Uh, I I think I will leave it to Dave to update. Uh, further on the business plans. Uh, first is, I think all, all of us already know that MD Pictures is planning to do a right issue, which we are planning to do basically 20% of our paid up capital. So the overall is we have already, you know, set up the stage for the next label of growth story for MD Pictures. And basically at current point of time, we are exploring a business combination and the expansion plan. We are looking into various business models, uh, how to multiply the growth of MD, because we, we all agree that MD is decently growing year after year, quarter after quarter on a decent pace. Now the overall, uh, overall strategy we have is how to multiply the growth story of MD going forward because we have a huge capacity and the resources with MD uh, especially in the content production industries so how to basically uh, multiply those growth so we are looking into those business expansion growth and possibilities and that is the model we are you know we are looking into the future in 2023 and uh, beyond of course, at this point of time, I cannot reveal the business plans and all because uh, you uh, because I have to first submit everything to the OJCA and that time I will come out with a clear cut plan with all my stakeholders. Uh, uh, what is our business plan going forward? Full business plan and how is our expansion business model? Uh, as of now, I can only say that Things are looking very positive and, and we are looking into various business opportunities, all exciting opportunities, how to multiply the growth of MD pictures. Thanks. Dave, you want to add something on this? Sure. And um, I think I, I, we receive this question frequently on, you know, we, since we're so healthy, we have so much cash, um, you know, what is it that we need a, to do a rights issue for what are our plans? And as Anand said, uh, we, we can't release specific details, but what I can say is that for the, for the theater business, the, the way to grow in the theater is not to release you know, many, many more movies. We simply cannot. There are only so many weekends every single year. Um, our, our strategy in the theaters is to release good movies. Maybe it's 10 to 12 
powerhouse blockbusters per year. But what we've learned in past years, if you look at it, you, you'll see it reflected in our financials even back in 2018 and 2019. When we released 23 movies in a single year, we did not get more income. Um, it, our income per film was far lower because we start stepping on our own movies. We start competing with ourselves in the theaters. So what we've learned this year, and as you'll see coming into 2023, we're going to be very choosy which movies go into the theater. And it's not a volume game. We are learning that we can release a good solid film, maybe once a month, maybe even less than that, and really maximize how much money that film makes, makes in the theater and then turn around and license it into OTT. So my short answer is we're doing quite well in the movie theaters. We're already dominating with the number of tickets sold in the theaters, which means that we cannot expect to grow much more than the growth of the movie theater business in that segment. And then on OTT, well, as I've explained in past earnings calls, you know, we supply everyone. We supply all the OTT platforms in Indonesia. And in fact, in some cases, we are by far the largest supplier of content to these platforms in Indonesia. So if we want to grow, we cannot sell more content to these very same platforms. They're loaded up and they're buying a lot and I love them as customers and they just aren't big enough to buy more Indonesian content. So we have to wait for more customers to reach more consumers. So our rights issue is designed to, basically it's to increase our distribution. We have a capacity that's untapped. We can build more content. We can produce more content. We have a very large pipeline. We have over a hundred pieces of IP that have yet been monetized. We've got a number of films that are already in production, a number of series already in production. We just need to expand distribution, reach more end users, and that's our goal. Um, so uh, I think that's, that's it for my side on you know, us presenting to you. I see a number of questions that are building up in the Q&A. Um, I'll turn it over to Faris to um, pick and choose some of those questions and we'll do our best to answer those. Okay, thank you, Dave and Anand for the wonderful presentation. Actually, yeah, just, just before the Q&A, we have, we have also another presentation that is going to be presented by Mr. Anugrah Pratama from EY Partner. And so Mr. Anugrah, if, if, if you will, the time is yours. Yeah, thank you, Faras. Uh, I'll, do, uh, I'll do a little bit of a brief uh, presentation uh, just to re-emphasize the message from Pak Anan and Pak Dave. Uh, it's a very uh, outstanding, remarkable performance of MD. But if we see and ask why, I think we can find the answers of the fit between the strategy and the, the industry itself. Then people will ask, what are the trends? What will be the future for this industry? I'm kind of hinting. So for those of you who are speculating on what kind of the next move uh, that MD will take, I rest assured that uh, they're actually following the, the right directions, uh, willing to capitalize the trend uh, and optimize uh, their strategy to capture the, the opportunity. So if we see uh, the, the industry itself, I think globally, locally as well, there are several trends. Yeah. The first one is the changing of the media consumption pattern. So now more of a balance between traditional, the cinema versus the digital media. So, but Dave and Pa Anan has mentioned before that MD is actually very strong in both channel. So either one, so when there is a pandemic happens, digital channel 
is increasing. Post-pandemic rebalancing between the digital and cinema, but MD also exists in the cinema. So either one. This can also be used, that this kind of argument can also be used when people ask about what happened during the recession. Will people still go to the cinema in 2023? Yeah. But if MD has a very strong presence in both channel, so it's a matter of relocating and re-strategizing to capture where the, the flow of the customers, where the, the, the flow of the viewers going forward, be it in the cinema, in the OTT business. The second trend is actually inorganic growth in order to capture, strengthen, enlarge coverage, enlarge outreach, enlarge the customer base. So it's very common in this industry globally, and it happens now in Indonesia, to actually acquire resources, acquire business in order for you for the company to strengthen their presence, to capture more market. The third trend is actually what we call content as a key differentiating factors. This is the interesting part about MD, as Pa Anan and Pa Dev mentioned, they have proven, historically proven content. They have credibility in building content. But the most important thing, when we talk about future next year, people say it's a recession. And if you see releases from all economies in Indonesia, it's actually quite shielded from the what so-called recession. So the impact of the recession is actually not as big as in the other market. However, we all need to be cautious on the foreign exchange. But this is the, the interesting part about MD. The market is Indonesia. The revenue from the film, from the uh, uh, Sinetrons are in Rupiah, but their cost base is also in Rupiah. So as long as Indonesia economy are still Economies are still optimists on this. Economic, economic will be growing in the, in the future, in, especially in next year. MD is actually pretty much shielded from the uh, exposures of uh, foreign exchange. The fourth aspect is about shifting on the where the money is. It follows the trend of a digital versus traditional. And more and more we see in terms of advertisement, uh, digital advertisement is actually taking uh, over uh, the traditional uh, advertisement. Another thing that I wanna highlight is convergence. So if we look at successful players in this market, convergence, ability to dominate across the value chain. So they have from content down to the distribution channel. The other aspect that I wanna highlight also is the uniqueness of Indonesia. So people can argue digital media, but still, uh, it's a big country, yeah. People are still watching TV, yeah. People are still uh, watching the traditional media, and 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 there are still money. There, there are still opportunities in that particular segment, and I think uh, MD is also quite strong in this uh, area by uh, several. Uh, mini series, uh, and and I believe in the future they will also uh, able to optimize their portfolio, the cinema, the digital, as well as the traditional uh, media going forward.
Last but not least, I think all this success are anchored around the capability of MD maximizing and capitalizing the, the conditions in the industry. So we see first a very strong foothold in the content production, a strong footprint leading in all channels, multi-channel presence. So regardless of, for example, recession, people not coming to cinema, MD has the, the digital. People going to cinema, less digital, and MD is also strong in, in, in the cinema. And as Pa Anand and Pa, they've mentioned the aspiration to become more integrated, to be able to provide more outreach, capture more opportunity, synergizing, leveraging the IPs uh, to the max uh, so that I think uh, in the future, we do see if MD follows this particular uh, mindset or strategy, I think they are, they are aligned with the industry practice and they can actually capture the potential of the industry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anugra, for the lovely presentation and to give uh, somewhat a, a brief uh, future value for film and how and how film is more valuable for us investors to invest in it. Okay, so we're going to move to the Q and A. Bear in mind, we have two moderators here, me and also Kevin. So before we go to the Q and A, I, would, I actually want to ask Kevin uh, for for his view first. So Kevin, uh, you. You're you're currently running Saham Rakyat, right? So I just want to know your yes, view correct. about film in the retail market and how does the retail market perceive film currently? Okay, so when we're when we're talking about MD Pictures, uh, MD Pictures, even without uh, knowing about the stock market, most of Indonesian people know MD Pictures as one of the leading uh, production house, and even Pamanos Punjabi as the owner itself uh, now seems like a celebrity, right? Everyone knows Pamanas Punjabi. Uh, I think uh, with this uh, euphoric, eu euphoric uh, increase in the stock price, yeah, I, I think I have one question, uh, maybe for Dave. You know that we believe as a retail customers, retail investors, uh, the, the stock price now it's around uh, 3,000 level. Yeah. It is increased because KKN was so successful. And 9 million followers is... Tough number to beat. Maybe my question would be, um, what are your strategies to beat KKN? Because 9 million is definitely a record. And how, how, how to beat that number? So let me, let me go back to the premise of your question, though. You, you said that the stock price went up because of KKN. And that's not entirely true. The stock price went up before KKN. Um, I think what had happened, we saw this back when the stock was trading around 300. All of us internally were looking at that and saying, well, this doesn't make any sense, but let's not pay attention to the stock price. Let's just do make some good content and continue to release it. Um, and the, the growth in our stock price was occurring along the way over the last 18 months. And it was, I think, you know, Retail investors are, you know, an interesting bunch of people. We'd have a movie come out that somebody really liked. It might not even do well in the theaters, but somebody really liked it. They post on Instagram. They have a large following and all of a sudden the stock price goes up. We have another film that does phenomenally well in the box office, but didn't have a lot of word of mouth on places like TikTok. And the stock price is not affected. So retail buyers can be pretty fickle. I think, you know, for me, and I've had this conversation with my friends at Samwell several times, we knew we were undervalued when we were at 300. That's when Tencent came in and they, they agreed to right. a 500 share price when we were trading around 325. They knew we were undervalued. And I talked to them then and said, well, you know, you're getting a steal. We're worth two point. We're worth twenty five hundred, not five hundred. And you know, here we are. And then Kaka N comes out, 
and people go, wow, these guys are not just posers, they're real. Um, and it is creating value. Um, I can't tell you we're gonna beat 9 million, but I can tell you, look over our history, our, the second year we were in business making films, we put out Ayat Ayat Chinta, and I think it did 3.7 million tickets, which at that time was the beat the record that had been there for 10 years from Titanic. When we released Donor, it beat every record for horror movies. Both of those have since been beaten. Somebody's going to beat 9 million. We hope it's us. But I can guarantee that at some point in the future, we're going to break another record and another one, um, as long as we keep putting out great content. I'll add one more thing. Just making good content is not enough. Um, it's how you monetize it that really matters. And if you were to look inside of our company, you're going to see us acting more like data scientists than creative producers. Creativity comes from our creative team with Minaj and the producers and the script writers. But we really crunch numbers pretty smartly. Um, let's take an example of recently uh, a, a piece of IP like Squid Game. So great content, right? Broke all records, right? But the producers who made this and sold it off for just a $10 million profit, you know, it cost them 20 million. They made 30 from Netflix. They go home going, great, we did good. But that value on the IP right now is $900 million for something that costs $20 million to make. And you'll see similar things inside of our company, different scale, of course. When we produce Kaka N, it costs what, about $1 million all in to make something like that. I mean, Indonesia is relatively very inexpensive to produce. We spend a million dollars. Kaka N already is grossing worldwide over 50 million. And but if you came to us today and said, I'll give you $50 million for that, we'd say no. It's going to make much, much more money for us over the long term. So back to retail investors, when they start to understand how those metrics work, they will and they will spend more. Um, when we're trading at three. 3,000 a share. I don't know. I think we're worth right now 4,500, maybe 5,000 a share. That's my personal opinion. It does not count as forward looking statements. Um, but that's only on our existing business with plans to expand, plans to grow our distribution, plans to acquire and get something bigger. Um, I think we're looking at something, you know, worth far more than that. All right, thank you so much, Dave. Okay, Faris, I, I uh, give the time back to you. Thank okay, you. thank you, Kevin, and also thank you, Dave. Okay, so so that is the question from uh, Kevin, and also a special question from Kevin to Dave. And now, before we before we open the Q and A to the public, uh, we would like to welcome Pa Fati as our senior technical analyst to present his his technical analysis on the film stock and how does the film and how does film analysis from a technical perspective? Paul Fati, the time is yours. Okay, good afternoon. Okay, uh, my view for uh, G, uh, GCI, IDX is still a uh, long-term uptrend, yeah? <clears throat> Since uh, the, uh, the uh, January 2021. But uh, in the last few uh, weeks, there is some consolidation, but uh, I'm still uh, optimistic that uh, uh, 7130 will be breakout uh, and the market will go to 2000 uh, to 20 uh, 7300 yeah 7200 because uh, why uh, for last uh, uh, candle that we see there is a, a, a pattern that is uh, very bullish actually. Uh, and film with this, which is in the IDX cyclical is 
uh, in this uh, rotation graph, it's uh, going up and slightly to uh, right. Uh, it means that the momentum and the trend is positive uh, comparing to uh, GCI. And uh, with the peers that I got from Bloomberg, uh, a film is also uh, upside and going uh, right. Yeah, so the momentum and the trend is okay. Uh, this is uh, film. Yeah, for the, from January, it's uh, leading. Yeah, uh, comparing to the others. Okay, uh, the price charts. Uh, with uh, there is a consolidation from August, but uh, this. Uh, Several, uh, last week, it has a bearish trap. Yeah, it's break the support, a strong support, but it came back up. So uh, <clears throat> it means that bullish is uh, very strong in the market, and uh, uh, the probability that the, uh, the price is going up and try to break the twenty eight hundred is a big chance. And if this level is break out, then uh, the upside is going to 3,000 until 3,500. Uh, and that's uh, my view on technical. Thank you, Faras. Okay, thank you, Paul Fati, for the wonderful technical analysis view on the film stock. And now we're going to open the Q&A session to the public. Uh, bear in mind, uh, so, so for so for all of you who would like to to ask a question to Dave Anand and also maybe to Mr. Anugrah, you, you can you can do it by typing the question on the Q and A box, and I will read it out loud. Okay, so the first question, I think I think the most questions there that that, that is going on right now is about your rights issue plan. So, uh, Dave and Anand, maybe you can share a bit about the rights issue plan and, wh and what will you do uh, should the rights issue, uh, right, right issue be a success and what, it, what is the growth story for film post rights issue? Maybe Dave and Anand can give a, a little bit of color on that. Sure. Uh, let me add on the right issue qu question. Uh, uh, I think mo a more clear plan, we will have it by the next year, first half of the next year. What I can say right now is we are looking into few business opportunities and expansion plan uh, uh, to expand the business as we have discussed in our uh, disc, uh, you know, the presentation session. So that is what we are looking into it. But the whole detailed plan and exact plan will be coming out next year by the first half of next year, uh, which we'll be sharing. But we are looking into a whole business expansion and growth plan. And second question is basically what I see in the in the in the comment section is basically uh, you know wh why uh, what we are going to do with uh, uh, you know cash and all uh, basically no debts and all which I'll say that see our business model is very simple we keep it uh, we have an internal policy of not burning cash that is our very much you know the policy that we follow so we are looking into a business expansion and business model in which we can basically grow a business and expand a business in a sustainable and more reliable way for our shareholders without burning cash and it should be a margin based business that means we'll continue to you know grow from a top line and the bottom line perspective that is what we are looking into in the future Okay, thank you, Anand. Maybe Dave, Dave, do you, do you want to add something? Um, I, I think he summarized it pretty well. Obviously, we can't give away details on, on any particular targets or, or um, execution plans. Um, we, as you've seen, we don't need <clears throat> cash to build content. Um, we can maintain and sustain our existing growth um, without a rights issue. Um, no problem. We were very healthy with cash flow. Um, this is purely to expand distribution, expand uh, business opportunities into something bigger and better than what you see today. And we'd be happy to share those with you as they become realities. Okay, thank you so much, Dave. And also, th there is another question, and it and it's, I think it's, it's very interesting one. Um, what is your what is your plan on oh okay how many cinema movies are you going to release in 2023 and also an additional question uh when does Sebu Dino will be will be you know will be live in the in the cinema 
Maybe Dave can so answer I don't, that. I don't know if we said this yet, so I'll be careful. Uh, so number of films we're going to release next year, I'll be vague. Eight to 12 is our target range. Okay. Um, we have a, a really strong slate. Um, a number of those have been scheduled already um, into theatrical. Others are being planned to be released on specific dates. Um, eight to 12 films into theater. Next, you asked about Sewu Dino. Um, yes, we're releasing it next year. Um, if you go see Kaka N's extended edition, there will be a sneak peek. But you have to buy a ticket and go see it. Um, and uh, we have very high hopes for Sewu Dino as well. It's the first time, this is our first extension of Kaka N. It's from the same author in the same studio, of course, as Kaka N. And we think it's going to be a very strong expansion of the Kaka N universe, even though it's not the same storyline, same author, same studio. Um, and uh, we have not announced its release date yet. We're, we're usually careful about pre-announcing release dates because it gives our competition time to react. We don't want them to be able to stack up against us or, or try to avoid us. Um, so when we're ready to announce its release date, we will, but it will be next year. Okay, thank you so much, Dave. And also an, an additional question here um, from Balus Rahman. Um, do you have another you know, strategic plan are you going to do with Tencent Group, uh, not, not knowing currently that Tencent owns around 14% of your stock? Do you, do you guys have some you know, strategic plan are you going to do with Tencent and how does this an impact, uh, imp has it have an impact on your growth rate? Um, what I can say is the same thing we said when we first took that investment is that uh, Tencent bought into our company purely for a financial benefit, uh, looking for a return on their investment. Um, we do. We knew at the time that Tencent had some business in theatrical. Um, they have their own studio. They put out. They put money into uh, movies like Wonder Woman. I think they were they were involved in Top Gun Maverick. They pulled out of that at the last minute. So we thought possibly there were some strategic reasons that we might be able to work together. Um, we do have the possibility of that type of strategic relationship, uh, but that's not our interest as much. And that's not our priority with Tencent. It's not their priority with us. They were buying into the Indonesian content business and we were the leaders in that area. And so that's why they found us as an attractive investment. Okay. Thank you so much, Dave. And also, um, and, and also there, there is a question here from Tommy. Uh, there, there are rumors currently surrounding MD uh, to acquire an OTT platform or, you, you know, you, you guys can grow the Mox channel, which, which I know you guys have currently owned. Um, do you, so can you, can you explain to us about this and uh, are you planning on, on going to do this or is, is there any other angle that, that you are pursuing right now? Now, what I can say is what we said before, we really don't speak to rumors. Um, there are all kinds of things we could and might do. With our, with our cash. Um, definitely a digital future is interesting, um, but we have no interest in creating a, you know, uh, um, a money pit. Um, many online companies are spending far more money than, than their business models uh, can support. Um, that's not our approach. Um, there could be opportunities in OTT. We're certainly looking at it. There could be opportunities in a lot of places. So I'm sorry for being um, vague, but uh, what I will say is it, 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 it's not our interest to, um, to give validity to a rumor. Um, when we have a plan, we'll announce it and we'll do it properly. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Dave. And so... Um... I, I would like to give this opportunity to ask a question for Kevin. Kevin, would, would you like to, to, to ask Dave, Anand, or Panugra the questions? Maybe one more question about the IP. When, when you look at uh, like a Squid Game uh, with a very big IP value, is that happening also in Indonesia? And how do you see uh, 
IP valuation growing in, in our country? So it's definitely happening. Good question. I think that's one of the, the key areas that people who look at a media company like ourselves have um, the least amount of understanding. Uh, if you look at our balance sheet, try to find IP. It's not there. Our largest asset does not sit on a balance sheet. We depreciate and amortize and write it off very quickly. But here's how it works. I mean, we, we basically have, you know, Squid Game is one example, just one example, but let's look at it at a bigger scale. Um, when Amazon Prime purchased MGM, you know, they, they spent um, what is it, $9 billion to buy MGM. But, you know, what did they buy? It wasn't to buy buildings. It wasn't to buy people. It was to buy the IP. They got James Bond. They got Gone with the Wind, got Casablanca. You know, they got all of these great IPs that they are now looking to monetize. Now, you can argue they don't monetize very well after you saw the Lord of the Rings series. You could argue that, that you know, it's up to them now to do it well. But when you own that IP, it has future value. Same thing happens for us. Okay, let's take something like Ayat Ayat Chinta. So we, we put out a movie, it broke all kinds of records. We did Ayat Ayat Chinta Dua, and it did great. We now, the value of that IP is not how many tickets those two movies sold. It's what can you do with it? Now, we've, we have worked on obtaining external third-party valuations of the IP, um, and I think the easiest way for you to look at that is to say, um, if we were to want to sell the company today, our company value is many, many, many times the stock value because we'd be turning all that IP into instant cash, but we would no longer exist after we sold it. So in general, you know, a, a really successful piece of IP could be worth 20, 30 times what it cost us, maybe more what it cost us to make it. Um, and even IP that didn't do really well in the theaters, as I showed you an example before, a, a movie that didn't do that well in the movie theaters is still the top five being watched on OTT. Look at that value. What is it if, if I could attract millions of customers with a really cheap piece of IP um, then, then our company valuation goes through the roof. So uh, there are external parties that do valuations on IP, and we've spent a lot of time with our friends over at EY. They've done some research for us. Um, I can't share a lot of confidential data, but um, I think what you'll find is that the stories you hear about Squid Game or about the MGM acquisition or when Disney bought Marvel, Marvel was just floundering. It was nothing. And they bought it for $4 billion. They wouldn't sell it for you know, $50 billion today. So these stories are all over. Our advantage is that we are focused 100% on Indonesia. The Indonesian content market, where we're dominating. And our closest competitors simply don't have the scale. They can have creativity, but they don't have the scale to be able to service this market. So there's a huge, huge upside and growth just with Indonesian content. We barely touched upon it. Um, you're going to see a series come out on, from Disney in January, Journal Risa, based upon our Donur universe. I can see ghosts. We expect it to do really well. We expect it to turn into multiple seasons. You're going to see a series coming out on uh, Amazon Prime at some point. I can't pre-announce it. Um, that's, we expect to do really well based upon our popular IP. Um, there will be a number of movies coming out this year and next year, 2023, 2024. We haven't planned in 2026 based upon existing IP. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. As long Once you have a hit, you can now expand. And um, uh, that's, that's just the way the, the industry works. All right. Does that thank answer you. Thank you uh, so much. the question? Yeah. 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 That's, that's okay. uh, pretty key. Uh, maybe can I ask one more question to Pa Anugra? Sure. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay. Pa, what do you think about uh, 
what uh, Dave has just explained about IP valuation. What, what, what are your views about, about IP valuation in Indonesia? Uh, I think going forward, it will become more common as the industry players are accustomed to, to this, right? We also hear, for example, government already look into the possibility, for example, a YouTuber with digital creative content to use the digital creative content as a, what you call it, collateral uh, for loan and others, right? So uh, more and more people will realize that the, 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 the strength of having an IP, yeah, and to value the IP uh, is actually there going forward. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, Pak. Silakan, Faras. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Panogur, and thank you, Dave. I think by by, by that question, we'll, we'll be going or will be our last question for today's event. Um, I would like to say thank you so much for uh, Anand, Dave, and also Kevin and Panogur, and also Palafati that has joining this today, the, the webinar today. Maybe um, Dave or Anand can give one of one of two one or two words to to close our webinar today. Well, I have to say it again. Uh, please go see Kaka and Extended Edition uh, coming out in December. Um, and uh, we have a really, really strong lineup, both OTE and um, in theatrical next year. So for our existing business strategy, um, I think you'll be really pleased to see the performance through 2023. Um, we do have plans to leverage on top of that. Um, if the rights issue goes through the way we hope, um, we believe that we could not just grow, but we could grow exponentially. Um, and, and, I, and I'll just say one more thing. I, I said this earlier that Indonesia is a really protected market in that Indonesian content is so important here. Um, it's going to amount for over 50% of the box office. You cannot have an OTT, OTT service successful here unless you have. Indonesian content, um, but we have so far to grow. Look at your personal lives and how much bandwidth you have, what your internet connection looks like, how reliable is it? We saw some OT, some internet numbers in the EY presentation. There's so much more growth. You know, I spend a lot of time out in the islands of Sulawesi and um, in my time during Indonesia, I, that I've lived here, I've seen it go from having only two and a half G coverage when I'm out on an island like Bunaken to now having four G coverage in a boat a mile off the shore. Um, that's only in the last five years. We see fiber optics being deployed across Indonesia. This is great for all digital commerce businesses, for fintech, for Tokopedia, for online commerce, for online health, online education, but it's absolutely going to help us. So even if we do nothing more than what we're doing today, we are going to grow. Um, come back, we'll talk to you again after the end of the year. Please enjoy your Christmas and holidays. Um, we hope to have an excellent year-end performance and we'll announce it again, be able to address these questions again with you in three months. Anand, uh, do you have anything to add? Yeah, just I will add that, you know, enjoy our content and we will take care of the numbers. The more you enjoy, the more better the number will be. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Anand, Dave. And uh, with that conclusion, we, we, we end our we end our today webinar. I would like to say thank you so much for Dave and Anand and also Panugra, Kevin and also Paafati that has joined this webinar and make this such a huge success. Um, we, we, we were also looking forward for you guys to see you guys again in the next three months in your, hopefully in your full year 
and, and the fourth quarter earnings call. And hopefully you guys can exceed uh, the mar market's expectation. And also, thank you so much, everyone, for to, that, that has joined us the webinar today. Don't forget, we, ha we have a YouTube channel. Please, please subscribe at youtube.com slash Samur Securitas Indonesia. And also, we have an Instagram at Samur Securitas Indonesia. And also, we do have a weekly star chart event that is going on weekly. Uh, through is going on weekly, so don't forget. And also, for, for those who get it, that haven't used Star, please register the Star Samuel Trading app. That that, that that is a trading app from the Samuel Securitas, which offers you great benefits and also great great for very great for trading activities. Okay, that is all from me, Muhammad Faraz Farn, as an equity research analyst from Samuel Securitas Indonesia. I would like to thank you all for that that has joined us today, and hopefully see you guys in the next event. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you.